Welcome to Edinburgh, the illustrious capital of Scotland and the cherished capital of my own heart. It stands out as one of the most breathtaking cities the world has to offer. Home to a majestic castle with over a millennium of stories, Edinburgh is not just a city, it's a spectacle of arts, glamour, history and enduring charm. As we wander, I'll share you five of my most cherished fragrances intricately woven into the tapestry of my past, present and future in this wonderful city that I deeply adore and am proud to call home. Edinburgh is much more than a vast expanse of Georgian architecture. It's a city intimately connected with nature. At its heart lies one of Europe's most iconic urban gardens, a testament to the city's unique blend of architectural grandeur and lush green spaces. This is the legendary Princess Street Gardens, a safe haven of beauty, nature, just in the middle of the entirety of Edinburgh. Similar to Central Park in New York City, although like a bit of a mini version. It's not the best temperature to be sitting down and enjoying the garden. It's very cold here, but in the spring and in the summer, you'll find this place quite packed and you'll probably find me among the crowds probably reading a nice book. Aqua Allegoria Forte Neroli Vetiver, that is a very long name for this fragrance, is a tour de force when it comes to fusing Neroli and Vetiver together. It also has a beautiful nutty smell that's in here, sort of almondy, a little bit hazelnutty, that brings the two wonderful notes together. I've really started to enjoy Vetiver a lot more because most of my fragrance apprentice Fragrance consultation clients really, really enjoyed the note of vetiver. Neroli is a note that I have spoken about many times on this channel. It is quite a bitter and intoxicating part of the citrus family. It's a very old school smell, and in a fragrance it can create a very regal and opulent smell. And this is that to a T. In fact, this is very, very cheap for what it is. This is very high quality. The Neroli, the Vetiver, and that woodiness is very rich and has great high quality. This is not a synthetic smell. This is sort of what Creed used to be like back in the 80s and the 90s. Also in the opening is quite a nostalgic, soapy note that's in here. This is very, very clean and a little bit suntan lotion-y with the citrus use of it. And that's very, very pleasant, and it's also incredibly green, much like how this whole garden will be green eventually. As you can see, it's January, it's the middle of winter, but even still, I think it looks very pretty and very beautiful, very gothic. But in the summertime, when I return, it's going to look amazing, feel amazing, and potentially smell as amazing as Neroleia Vetina Forte. If you walk down the streets of Edinburgh, you're going to be lavished with beautiful smells, sights and sounds. The smell of haggis and whiskey, the sight of the beautiful Gothic Georgian architecture, the castle, and of course the sound of the wonderful and rather loud Scottish bagpipes. Thank you! <laughs> Oscar, how long have you been playing the bagpipes? I've been playing pipes for three years now. I started in year nine, and since then I've just been playing them every day. You just told me that you, you, you were almost not allowed to play the bagpipes. I so it's a bit complicated, but sure. when I lived, when I was younger, I lived in a flat, so there wasn't much space to play pipes, so I had to play guitar instead. But I always wanted to play pipes, so when I went off to school, I had the time to do it. There are a lot of bagpipe players in and out Edinburgh. Do they need a license? Is there like a training? Like, how do they? No. Get so their there's no, there's no rules about it. It's just that you have to stay 50 meters away from the next piper. <laughs> you have to stay. So do you have like territories? It's like a bagpipe territory. On the Royal Mile, there are. Aye. So there's a spot outside the car opposite St Giles, and you have to like wait your turn to actually go there, or someone will get mad at you. But here, it's it's easier to get a spot because there's only one other paper down there, and there's sometimes one over there as well. Yeah, I know, yeah. Oh, there's, there's, there's loads. Um, it's, 
is there a, a social media that people can follow you on, follow your tunes? I can, I've just got my personal one, but I post all my pipes on that. It's just Oscar Binion. Um, all right, okay, Oscar Binion. It's hard to spell, but I'm sure it'll be there somewhere. Well, I'll have to write that down so that because, you know, you might be getting a few followers through this, hopefully. But uh, wonderful bagpipes. Um, I mean, you, and how long have you been going for? Uh, today, I've been playing since 12. It's two, about 2 o'clock now, and how long is your, your shift? So I'm going to be doing this until about 2.50, uh, 3 o'clock, because I'm heading home, and tomorrow I'm back again for maybe six hours. Well, Oscar, we'll, we'll see you around. <laughs> have a unique ability to transport you to incredible realms within your imagination and within your mind. Whether the stories are fictional or based on reality, and whether the authors are real or imaginary, there's something truly special about losing yourself in a good book. a long and illustrious literature history. Two of the most famous characters from literature originate from uh, Edinburgh, one being Harry Potter. You can quite tell that uh, the entirety of Edinburgh is uh, the inspiration for Hogwarts and the uh, decor and aesthetic of Harry Potter. And also Sherlock Holmes comes from Edinburgh. He doesn't really in the books. He comes from London. But Sherlock Holmes here continued um, by James Lovegrove. Of course, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle uh, originated from Edinburgh and wrote the books here. Imaginary Authors' Memoirs of a Trespasser has always reminded me of a beautiful old bookshop. You're sat in a wonderful bookshop reading the finest literature that you can whilst eating a vanilla ice cream. And with the dust from the books and the oaky woodness from the shelves and the floor and even the ladders, you put that together with the wonderful sweet vanilla ice cream and that is what Memoirs of a Trespasser has always smelled like to me. This is a wonderful bookshop in Edinburgh, really amazing. There are older bookshops I could have chosen, but this one is actually my personal favourite. Um, I like it because of the style, because they have a lot of the old uh, traditional aesthetics of uh, an old bookshop, and they have a really good science fiction and fantasy category that usually I'm the only person that's in here on my own, which is a real shame. Anyway, yes, Imaginary Authors Memoirs of a Trespasser one of my favourite fragrances of all time and something that I've been wearing a tremendous amount this winter. Thanks to my good friend Chris at Fragmental, I've had the privilege of becoming a member of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. This exclusive club boasts a selection of some of the finest whiskies I've ever had the pleasure of tasting. The combination of an exceptional whisky and the cosy ambience of an open fire makes it an ideal retreat for a cold winter's day. about the Single Malt Whiskey Society in general is that all of their whiskies are cask strength, which means that they're very, very strong. So this little whiskey here, and I've never had a bad whiskey here, that's something that I can really, really like attest to. If you ever come to Edinburgh, um, either come to the vaults or there is one on Queen Street. I'm usually at the vaults because it's members only. Um, but there's another one on Queen Street that has like a, a public, you know, regular bar. Um, and if you're a huge whiskey fan, and you're, if you're a huge Scotch fan, I would highly recommend skip all the bars, skip all the pubs, just come to the Single Malt Whiskey Society because I have never had a bad, bad whiskey. They are the niche of whiskey. They are the Zergioff of whiskey, if that makes any sense. 
but this is a um, sherry cask berry sweet fragrance uh, sorry whiskey it's really hit me I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm kind of struggling here a, a tiny bit but it's delicious mm. it's like eating chocolate cake chocolate cake and sherry it's amazing anyway before I go completely um, paralytic here I wanted to talk about tobacco and you, you know you'd think angel share would be a good uh, match um, angel men pure malt uh, would be a good match but whenever I'm drinking whiskey I really just enjoy tobacco you know that tobacco and honey is so decadent and so smooth that even though it doesn't smell like whiskey, it reminds me of the vibe of whiskey, the decadence of whiskey. And, and this is the most prestigious place, I think, in the world that you could drink whiskey, bar none. You know, this is, you know, this place treats whiskey as, a, as the highest art form. And um, it's a pleasure to drink in here. And tobacco, to me, is that. It's a very prestigious, very wealthy smelling, beautiful fragrance. That tobacco is so rich, so engaging, and that honey is not too sweet. It's smooth. It's a pleasurable uh, fragrance to wear and just totally goes with, you know, anything that you're doing that, uh, you know, needs to put a little pomp and circumstance in, anything that you need to, you know, um, be cozy, but also... uh, be wealthy because that's how I feel I feel cozy right now but I feel pretty well esteemed Uh, a beautiful fragrance one of the Dior Privé lines best I think I'm going to need for a I think I'm going to need a walk after this I'll tell you what I'll take you to the Royal Mile after this if I can still stand that is so beautiful but so very strong. (sighs) The Royal Mile, the crown jewel of Edinburgh, exudes an enchanting and splendid beauty, epitomizing the quintessentialness of the old town. The magnificent thoroughfare, steeped in luxury and grandeur, presents a breathtaking sight. As I stroll along the mile, I am enveloped in feelings that are both surreal and ethereal, deeply moved by the rich tapestry of historical narratives and royal legacy that it embodies. On the Royal Mile, you'll find lots of things going on, usually. I've seen men trying to escape from chains. I've seen magic shows. I've seen singing. I've seen dancing. I've seen absolutely, truly wild things in August because Edinburgh is the capital of culture in the United Kingdom, and that all comes together in August when we have the Fringe Festival. At that time, the population of the city triples and there is an estimate of 3,000 shows going on per day. And I think that there is no better place to discuss One Million Gold Nude by Paco Rabanne and the reason being is because of the striking similarity. The Royal Mile is a beautiful Georgian masterpiece of a street, of of a road. You can see all of the wonderful Georgian buildings. Down there is St. Giles' Street. At the top of the road, at the top of the mile, is the castle. You have the enchanting clock tower, and there's another church. I think there's actually about four churches on this mile. But in the center, in the middle, is usually a variety of fun entertainment, color, and just excitement. And that is kind of like Golden Oud on the outer shell is that Arabian jewellery oud skankiness that we all know and love. But in the centre is the fun, exciting, jammy, birthday cake, bubblegum one million that we also all know and love. A paradox of a harshness and a softness put together in one. This was my favourite release of 2023 for many different reasons. I think the balance was amazing, but the opening is truly 
dynamite. So beautiful, so exciting, gets me truly excited. I'm a huge fan of One Million and the One Million series, but this just takes the cake. This is that fruity, bubblegum, exciting One Million. Can you hear that? That's actually the two churches competing to tell the time but on the mile. That's, that's one of my favorite things, this. But yes, absolutely an amazing and beautiful composition by Paco Rabanne, one of the best. To me, it's their best work, and to me, this was the best of 2023. The most fun, the most exciting, and the most mature, exuberant, opulent, and sophisticated one million ever. Anyway, it's getting a bit cold and we're getting a bit dark, isn't it? Let's go to the pub. Can you hear that? That's the third. That's the third church trying to compete, telling the time. Let's go to the pub. When visiting Edinburgh, many are drawn to the charm of the old town, but the city offers so much more, including one of my favorite areas, the shore. This delightful locale, where waters meet the North Sea, boasts some of the city's most underrated yet remarkable pubs. The shore is a picturesque haven of tranquility, offering scenic ocean views that I highly recommend for those seeking a serene and beautiful experience. This is the Brass Monkey, and the Brass Monkey is, uh, there, were, there were a couple actually around Edinburgh, and it's not the most elegant and the most uh, sophisticated of pubs, but it's just really kind of charming, and I really like it, and I like the lighting setup. It's very moody and very cozy and very modern. And most of Edinburgh is, of course, you know, very, very old and, and very, very ancient even, some of them, especially like the castle and the old town. But I like here because it's actually kind of modern, and, yeah, it feels as though you're in the 21st century with this one, and, and it's a nice little you know, change of pace, even though I usually like the older pubs, but I thought that this would be an appropriate place to bring you here. So we're near the shore. It's one of the most underrated parts of Edinburgh. It's technically in a place called Leith, which is kind of like the um, New Jersey <laughs> to New York kind of thing. It's the Salford to Manchester. Uh, but I really, really like uh, Leith and I really, really like the shore. Narciso Rodriguez, uh, for him, the Blue Noir variation for me is absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance and it reminds me of the blue elements of the shore. It reminds me of the ocean. It reminds me of the, of the shore, essentially. Now, it's very, very cold outside. We're in the middle of January at the moment and the shore is literally, you know, there's, there's icicles there. But in the summer, you know, this is what I'll be wearing around here and this is the sort of the connotations that I get. A beautiful uh, blue kind of smell that we're used to now, that blue shower gel smell that has proliferated, you know, through many of the different fragrances of the past two decades. But it's got this beautiful iris that I think is uh, really quite captivating, really, really a compelling way to use iris with that traditionally pavement smell that Narciso Rodriguez brings into play, like pavement, cement smell, also with the blue oceanic style shower gel along with a very, very wonderful floral iris, a very unique fragrance, very interesting fragrance, and something I would highly recommend that you try out. And again, in general, I would try, if you come to, you know, Edinburgh, this is a, a place where you drink. Um, you know, I, mean, uh, I don't actually drink as uh, anywhere near as much as what I used to, but tonight's a bit of a drinking night, it's a bit of a party, you're here, and that's really fun. And uh, so yeah, like, we've got some great breweries in Edinburgh, we've got the Pilot Brewery, where this is uh, one of the Pilot um, beers that they have. 
and of course a tremendous amount of whiskey as you've already seen. So I'm gonna have this and I'm gonna have an Ardbeg 10. So Narcisa Soga Rodriguez for him, Blue Noir, is to my, in my opinion, the best blue, uh, is the best for him. In my opinion, this is the best for him out of the whole Narcisa Rodriguez line. And if you're an Iris fan, if you're a Joe Om fan, um, if you're a Valentino Womo fan, if you're any, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, I'd highly, highly recommend this. A very unique take on Iris. <laughs> you know, I've said this, I've told you this story before a couple of times, but for those of you who don't know, and that's probably not many of you, I saw that. This was the first thing that I saw of Edinburgh when I walked off the coach there. And it was literally this time of night. Uh, we've literally come here pretty much to the, to the day that I actually came here for the very first time five years ago. And I saw that, I call them the stacks because they look like they're building stacks on one another. And I thought, this is the city for me. This is the place that I want to live. And five years later, I've been living here for nearly two years. So that's pretty wonderful. It's a privilege to show people around whenever I get the chance and I hope that I've been able to give you a little bit of a taste of the city that I love and the fragrances that I love. I'm going to go away for a little while, uh, maybe a long while, I, I don't know, but something has come up with my film career that I, I have to do and I have to take care of. If you do want to see me, if you do want to see more fragrance content from me, the only place I'll actually be regularly posting is Patreon. So if you are already subscribed to my Patreon, thank you so much. Uh, you'll see me on there and of course on the Discord. But for the rest of you, it's been a wild one. It's been an amazing season six. We started here at season six when I had the long hair and the Victorian Hobbit outfit that you, uh, that you all loved, I think. And uh, I didn't live here at this point. That's how long this season has been going. I've done so many things. I've smelled so many fragrances. I've, I've created so many wonderful videos that I hope you really enjoyed. And uh, yes, so thanks so much for allowing me to be the Fragrance Apprentice. And well, goodbye.